welcome to Peak to Peak Adventures. I'm Madeline. And I'm Nick. Come with us as we take you across the beautiful Rocky Mountains. So today we are going to try the Tenderfoot Trail. This is a trail we've never done before, so we're both excited to explore it and show you uh, the distance to drive to the trailhead from DIA is about 57 minutes, um, which I'd say is pretty accurate because it took us like 45-ish. Um, and the we'll put some video in about like how we drove up the mountain. It was a lot of Turnbacks, switchbacks switch backs, yeah. and stuff. Yep. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're not comfortable whoa, whoa, driving whoa. that. Uh, there was quite a few switchbacks and a lot of bikers out today. Yes. So just be super oh. careful um, when you're driving up the mountain. A lot of bikers pretty much every day up in Boulder. Yeah, so. we are in Boulder, so well, it's just outside of Boulder, I guess. Someone's but. excited to start the hike. <laughs> um, the elevation right here before we start at the trailhead is 6,726 feet. Um, so it says on the, what is that app I use? Trails? Alltrails.com. Um, and that's actually a super cool app for you. We just have the free version. There's also a paid version, but it shows a bunch of different trails like around you and um, like there, it gives you like the miles, what kind of trail it is, all that kind of stuff. So great uh, resource yes. for you to use. Um, so on there, it's estimating it'll take you 45 minutes round trip and it's 1.6 miles round trip. Do you think that's round trip or one way? Um, uh, I would I say, say round trip would be white what they would put, yeah. but maybe not because it's an out and back trail. So maybe it's one way. One way. Yeah. Um, so we'll let you know at the end what we calculated it out being, both how long it took us and what our mileage was that we hiked. Mm -hmm. um, so the temperature yep. starting now is 61 degrees. 61 yeah. degrees. So it's beautiful out. Right. Um, I don't think you yeah. would need. If you need a jacket, it would be just a light jacket. Uh, I wouldn't say anything super heavy. So, um, another thing to note is the parking. There is a parking lot right here, like right off the trail head. Super tiny, like not even ten cars. Yep. Um, and then there's some parking like across the street. The main street. Yep. Still only like less than ten cars, and um, we got up here around two twenty. It's a little past that at this point but there was very minimal parking so i would recommend coming early getting a space doing the hike early um and then you won't have as many issues from this vantage point it looks like it's a very popular trail but there are a lot of different trailheads that start from right here yeah. so we'll see as we get into the one that we're hiking uh how busy the actual trail is so we will walk you up and show you the map real quick and get started. One more thing, it does cost to park. There's oh. a Boulder parking cost. It's yeah, five so bucks for a day, but it turns out to be like 568 with tax, which you can do on your phone. They have a QR code. You take you yeah, take the QR code, you walk through, you just put your license plate in. So if, you're, if you have a rental car or if it's your car, just make sure you know your license plate number. Otherwise, you gotta walk back because that's um, what I did. Unless your car is registered in Boulder, Boulder County, then you don't have a fee. That's where we were just doing our intro. They have a couple really nice picnic tables right there you can sit at. Um, so, right up here is the map and the parking fee sign that he was talking about. So, let's look right here. Uh, this is our trail head sign. We're doing the Tinderfoot Trail. So this is a map of all the stuff at Realization Point. The map itself shows all the different trails that are offered here. And along the side of it, it has like which trails are hikeable, which trails you can do mountain biking on, the ones that allow dogs, and then some of them allow horseback riding. Along the bottom are just some warnings of you must stay on the trail, no bicycles, which I think that just means 
you have to have a mountain bike if you're going to bike this trail and it has to be on the designated trails that allow mountain bikes. No camping, no fires, and no glass. And then there's a rules and regulations sign that just shows all the rules that are required for this, all these trails up here. And then that sign was what we were talking about earlier with the boulder parking fee that is required. Here's a look at the parking lot that we were saying is very small. People started parking along the side, which meant the people in the spots couldn't get out. So just a heads up. Okay, so here is where it looks like it splits between these two trails. So it tells you which one is which for what you're doing. And like I said before, we're doing Tinderfoot Trail. We'll come back and do some of the other ones a different time. It's all a little slushy and muddy. Yeah, we had snow a couple days ago. So I'm curious to see how it is as we like progress through the hike. But there's definitely still some icy spots so far. Come on, Nova. There's the main trail right here, and then it looks like there's just this tiny little, like, side venture that I think just leads down here to this pile of rocks. Maybe there's like a good viewpoint right here. Yeah, so just kind of a pretty view right there through the trees. And then you can just go back up that little trail to the main path. Um, one thing I'm noticing right off the bat, there's a lot of rocks on this trail, so be careful because you could hook your foot and you're going down. So. It's our miniature Australian Shepherd, Nova. This is Nova. Nova, say hi to the camera. It is a dog friendly trail as long as they're on a leash, unless the sign up there said that if they're um, registered in the county of Boulder as like a sight or hearing dog, they don't have to be on the leash. So. Nova is not. No. The signs are here. No. She's a nervous puppy. So. Yeah. And all the trails are generally pretty good about telling you if it's dog friendly and if they have to be leashed. So most of the time the dogs are leashed. Yeah, it's pretty rare that there aren't signs that they need to be leashed. It is very windy up here today. Ooh, look at that bud. Nice view. Very nice view.
This is kind of cool because I feel like all of a sudden we came like out of dense tree area and we're in this like little like valley where there's not quite as many because we came from right there and then they're more like up the hill now. I bet in the summer when this is all green it's super pretty. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a good place to do like engagement photos or something, it's a good spot. It's beautiful. It's not a super like exhausting hike to get to some of these like picturesque moments. All right, let's see here. So, I don't know what that trail is. We're gonna go. Oh, right over, look, is that way? Oh, gotcha. that was like that like little alcove kind of that we did a panoramic view. I think we're just under that. I could be way off on that. Is this the end? Chuck and drive. Okay. Oh, so this must be the end. So you can see here, Tender trail, Tenderfoot Trail, Chuck and Drive goes around. Ah. Yeah, so see it says right here. So that means we hit the end of the trail and it's just headed back now. Finish the hike. Um, it's a pretty easy hike. Would yeah, say? I would say I would rate it easy. Very easy. Yeah. Um, there wasn't. I felt like it was a pretty level hike. Not a lot of like you're going straight down for a long time or straight up for a long time. It was pretty 
even the entire way, I felt. Yeah, the incline, if any. I mean, it says 275 on the app. The elevation gain. Yeah, but it's not like a straight 275, so you'll... No, it, it was it's gradual, nice. I felt like. Yeah. Um, I would say the hiking trail was very specific. You could see exactly where it was at. Not at any point were we like, uh, do we go this way or that way? Yeah, there um, wasn't any confusion on like where we needed to be going. Yeah. And lots of signs to tell you like this, if you're trying to continue this trail or go to a different trail, it was very clear. Yeah. Um, the, as far as like iciness and stuff, I really actually was surprised. It wasn't as muddy as I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, and the only, I think the worst part was there was a little bit of a slope and that entire slope was icy. So trying to like maneuver down that with the dog pulling you yep. and a toddler on his back <laughs> who's crashed, um, was a little tricky, but otherwise it was super easy. I mean, you don't need like spiked boots or anything like that. It, I'm in generic hiking boots. He's in tennis shoes. So. Yeah, and I'd say tennis shoes isn't the best thing when hiking, mainly because you don't wear your nice tennis shoes or shoes on hikes because you know that you're going to get them muddy or wet. So you wear old ones. Old ones aren't very good comfort-wise, so definitely get a nice pair of hiking boots. They would just help. Um, it was an out-and-back trail, which means we take the exact same trail back to the start. Um, so... We'll probably not film on the way back. We filmed everything coming, so I might split up the footage and put some like as we're walking back. Um, Only saw but, some birds, didn't see any yeah. wildlife. There were no uh, wildlife warning signs either. Sometimes you see those like throughout the trail that like there's bears in the area or mountain lions, whatever, but I didn't see any of those on this one. Yeah, no. It's pretty quiet. Um, and I know we mentioned before that it's very busy up there at the start, but I feel like there's so many trails around this area that share that parking lot. The trail itself, we passed maybe three people, yeah. like three sets of groups. There wasn't very many. Um, uh, so it's a very quiet trail. You're kind of on your own out here. A good trail to bring like a picnic to. There's a good little area right here at the end or that area about like halfway through that we kind of did that panoramic view. That's a great area to sit and eat something there's gorgeous views um, one of the prettier hikes i feel like yeah that we've done because you can see this mountain behind us like the entire way so it's kind of cool but some hikes you like you're in a lot of foliage until the end and then you get that gorgeous view this one was kind of consistent through yeah, and for an afternoon hike too i thought it was pretty shady um almost the whole yeah. way so there were some stretches of sun, but not a ton. Yeah. If you do it in the summer, you could still do it morning, afternoon, yeah. night, and you're not going to burn up. Yeah. So we're doing this like towards the beginning of March. It is very windy up here today. Very yes. windy. Um, we're out here a lot later in the day than we normally would come on a hike. Uh, so maybe the mornings aren't quite as bad. Um, or it could just be the season that we're in. But... Very breezy, but not so much that I'm cold. Like, I have a, a t-shirt on and <clears throat> I'm comfortable, the, so. It's in the low 60s today. That's why, that's why I think it's a little extra busy as well. People yeah. are tired of uh, It's been cold up, this so. weekend, so. Yeah. Um, Get out, move, exercise, enjoy the hike, so. Yeah, so with that, we're going to head back and then um, probably have a few other things to say at the end, like how long it took us round trip and the overall miles did so we'll see you at the end bye and we're back we're done took about one hour and 15 minutes roughly and, and we now, stopped yeah we weren't going fast no. um because i stopped to take some pictures and um nova is not in super shape. quick in shape <laughs> she's we'll not be honest yeah um I know so her after we hit the like end of the trailhead she lost all interest in continuing and we had to drag her a little so it took us a lot longer than i think it probably would have like if it was just him and i without even gideon and stuff too because he fell asleep super heavy and um but it was nice like we weren't like going super slow but 
to take our time and enjoy the views and everything. Um, also stopping and doing some videoing and stuff. So accounting all that, it's probably a little closer to the estimated 46 minutes if you're just like booking it through there. Um, yeah, I would not, say probably. take, I would say cut out about an hour of time, like no. from when you get up here, get ready, get on the trail and everything. Um, so I take back what I said at the <laughs> end of the trail, like halfway coming back was all uphill. I didn't realize how much we were going downhill. Um, it still wasn't bad. No, it wasn't horrible, it wasn't but bad. there is an incline coming back, so just be prepared for that. Yeah. So, make sure you drink water. Yeah. Stay while hydrated. you're driving up, so then you don't get a headache when you get done. Yeah. Dr drink water throughout the hike. Altitude um, sickness is a real thing, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't bring my hydro flask, but I have one, so then I usually sip on water throughout the hike. But yeah. definitely a good idea to drink water. Before drive or on your drive up, on your drive down, make it'll sure help. Just make sure you don't get headaches and get sick. And, yeah. Yeah. So. And eat food too. Yeah. Not too much that you make yourself sick, but. Yeah. yeah. It was a good hike. I would come back and do this one again. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely want to come back and try some of the other trailheads up here. Yep. Um, it's obviously very popular, so. Get up here early. Yeah. Or you're just walking a little bit further to get to the trailhead, yeah. so. so it's just fine. Alright, well. Otherwise, all right. see ya. Bye.